Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Why We Grow. I had the opportunity of meeting with Bethany, the Chicago gardener, and she grows really uniquely in a very small space in an urban setting. She actually grows on a rooftop, which is super interesting. So she had a lot of great advice to share for those who have small spaces and maybe some container gardening, all of that. It was so interesting and I hope you all enjoy. Thank you so much, Bethany, for joining us today. Should Thank be, you for having me. <laughs> yeah, this should be really fun. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to this. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So I live in Chicago. I've lived here for about 10 years now, originally from Indiana, so not too far away um, from Chicago. And okay. I'm married, live with my husband and two cats. And I would say I started gardening probably about four years ago, because I used to think living in Chicago, I couldn't have a garden because I was used to gardens in a yard. Um, so about four years ago, I think I bought my first tomato plant and oh, that's kind exciting. of gone from there. Yeah. <laughs> so what got you into gardening? Uh, when I was really little, I remember working with my grandpa in his garden, which was in Indiana. Um, in my head, it was a gigantic garden, but since he lived in a you know relatively good sized city, it probably wasn't as large as I have in my head. Um, but I specifically remember like walking through the rows with him. Uh, he would pick rhubarb and I would chew on that and then we'd take it inside and my grandma would cook like strawberry rhubarb pies. So I've always had this memory. Good. Yeah, oh, it was delicious. I've tried to make one on my own. I don't think it's as good as it was, but I'm still practicing. Um, <laughs> But they just had an amazing garden. And then my mom, I think for the most part with my mom, it was mostly like just flowers in the yard. But I knew I always wanted a larger garden like my grandparents. But like I said, I thought it would be, you know, if I ever moved out of the city or whenever I had a good size yard, because that's not something most people have <laughs> living yeah. inside of a city. So I was kind of waiting for that day. And then eventually, I mean, I'm 36 now. I got tired of waiting. <laughs> Yeah. So I just started gathering some pots and seeing what I could do with what I have, which is um, about a 20 by 20 balcony. That's awesome. I feel like that's such a common misconception too, like that yeah. you have to have a whole bunch of space in order to have a garden, yeah. grow things. And well, I, I just assumed a lot of plants too would only grow in the ground and not grow in a pot. And now I've realized I can pretty much grow most stuff in pots. I mean, there's even places like restaurants downtown that have giant trees inside in a pot. Yeah. So if you have a large enough pot, you can grow whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. We have some like citrus plants, like things that we have to bring indoors in the winter. Yeah. We grow them in smart pots, you know, like the big 25 gallon smart pots with handles and move them in and out. <laughs> Wait, where do you store yours over winter? Um, we were doing them in the, in our shop area. It's kind of okay. like a garage. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. I have one lemon tree that's in a very small pot, but I want more fruit trees. So I don't know if citrus, more citrus will ever be my plan, but I definitely want like apple trees and cherry trees. So those in pots, I'm kind of next on my wish list. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely difficult for the citrus to keep them going. Yeah, I've lost a lemon tree or two, hoping this one lives. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We've definitely had our fair share of. Uh, death in the citrus families. Yeah. I always overwinter it's some difficult. sort of pest too. I feel like usually it's spider mites on it. So uh, it's yeah. probably trying to tell me it wants to be in a warmer climate, but I'm still trying to make it work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I I, I'll count that as a wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it looks like a wave to me. <laughs> oh my God. And what's her name? This is Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Say hi to Bethany. Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, anyways, what yeah. we <laughs> little baby breaks some company. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and so it cute. looks like you do some growing indoors too. I see your background. It's absolutely beautiful. I do. I think that started the year after gardening and it kind of went crazy at first with yeah like, I have way too many house plants when way more than I could easily take care of so I've kind of been scaling back what I have but this is what gets me through the winter I basically ignore them when I'm out in the garden so like I'll water them 
but pretty much don't pay any more attention between like May and October. And then once the garden's kind of done, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I should make still make sure you all are still alive, which they do <laughs> pretty well. They probably do better when I ignore them than when I pay too much attention to them. But I have just I a feel bunch like of, that's so common. Yeah. It's same thing with the garden too. It's like, okay, if I pay a lot of attention, I'm doing the stuff that's killing it. And if I ignore it, they're really happy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So often people kill their gardens with too much love. <laughs> yes. Yes. And my love came in the form of too much water a lot yeah. of the time, especially with house plants, because I thought, oh, it's drooping. It must need more water, but it was drooping because I'd given it too much water. So then I yeah. just kept giving it more and more water. Yeah. And that was something, my mom was the house plant person. So my grandparents were the garden people. My mom was the house plant person. And I swear I remembered watering them every day. But again, that's probably a fake childhood memory because now I've realized you don't need to water all of these every day. But yeah. I have, I have, hard to kill plants as well, because I don't like the stress of high maintenance plants. So I'm just like pothos, philodendrons, I think. Oh, a snake plant. <laughs> so how do you get it all over your wall like that? A bunch of command hooks. So yeah. they're kind of okay. blending in, but um, yeah. they're like flexible command hooks too, so that you can kind of bend them wherever the vine is growing. So that's what I'm using for all of that. I used to use thumbtacks and those would fall to the wall and end yeah. up on the floor. And I realized oh, that yeah, the command hooks, great. yeah, command hooks are a little bit better. The only issue now is that I think we're planning to paint sometime oh, in the next Oh yes, that's gonna months. be so challenging. Yes, so I have to probably take all of that down and then I don't know if I'll wanna put it back up with new paint, even though the command hooks haven't taken the paint off of the wall now, but it, I feel like once we start to make the room, I don't know, a little bit nicer, I'll feel worse about putting the command hooks on but we'll see but i love it especially Absolutely beautiful yeah coming in here when it's you know gray and zero degrees outside mm -hmm. kind of makes it feel you know a little bit happier in here yeah so it there in chicago is it is it like it is here where everything like dies off in the winter and it's like everything is there's no oh, green. no there's no green there's maybe there's not really a ton of evergreens near us either. I'm even trying to think like on the streets outside, it's mostly trees that lose their leaves. So it looks really pretty for a few weeks with all the changing colors and then yeah. everything falls off and everything is brown. So adding as much as I can in here is really the only place I see green until, well, I always think it's going to come sooner, but probably till like end of April, early May is when things start to rebloom wow. again. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly how it is here in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. March 21st hits and I'm like, oh yeah, it's spring. And then it's still, like, we're still getting snow yeah. <laughs> for the next month. <laughs> what zone are you in there in Chicago? So we're in 6A and it's a very small pocket because I think we're so close to the lake. The majority, I'm pretty sure the majority of Illinois is 5B, um, but there's just a little area in Chicago that's 6A. So okay. yeah. <laughs> and it's been not as bad the last few years, I mean, it still gets cold, but we had really terrible cold, I feel like five years ago. And then for Chicago, the winters have been a bit milder in the last few years, but you never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you, are you able to grow anything over the winter there? Um, I'm trying to think. I have one small evergreen in a pot, but it's like this big that I put some lights on Christmas. I was thinking of trying to add some up here as well, but I have limited space. So I never know if having something out there in winter is worth it taking up a lot of space during summer. And I haven't really tried a tree up on the deck in a pot, even though, like I said, I want to. So I have to figure out if that would work, but I'm trying to think of anything else other than house plants. No, we're pretty much just shut inside. <laughs> until it starts to get warm enough again yeah but I propagate a lot I mean I will oh yeah duplicate at least all of these plants that I have in here by the time winter is over this year and then I have to give them away because I realize I have no room for them <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good problem to have too many instead of yes. not enough yes and now I'm turning my friends into plant people because I'm like take these out awesome. of my home I have no more space for them I love it I love it <laughs> it's just so much fun. That was something I didn't realize when I first started doing house plants is that you can take a house plant and then turn it into a lot more plants all for free. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I did that with actually a raspberry bush too. So I have one 
raspberry bush that I just dug up a runner this spring and put it in another pot and they're already the same size and producing berries. So now I'm probably going to end up with a whole raspberry patch at some point. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. We had a blackberry bush that I, it just really took over our yard. It was oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> that's on my list too, is to get a blackberry bush. I have blueberries, strawberries, but those don't get that large raspberries. And then I want a blackberry. And then I think my berry patch would be complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love growing berries. All, all sorts of fruits are, are amazing. Yeah. And we don't have the problem here. One benefit, I guess, of growing in pots is I can pretty much keep them contained. So where they would like spread like crazy uh -huh. in the ground, I don't have to worry about that, which is good, even though I wish yes. I had enough space to have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what was the very first plant that you did that you got started with? Uh, well, the very first one was a tomato plant. Um, okay. I think just because they taste so much different, I knew that's what I wanted and they're everywhere here. So I got a tomato plant. I then put it in a pot that was about this big around. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't know what indeterminate meant. And then I learned that quickly. <laughs> and I put it in a space because at the time we were living in a place with a covered balcony, uh, much smaller, and it got maybe two hours of sun. So Oh. It did not do well. <laughs> and then that's when I started Googling every time I got a plant and realized all the things I was doing wrong. So now I have tomatoes in a 30 gallon grow bag that are doing a lot better than the first one I started with. Absolutely. But yeah, That was my first plant, at least as far as I can remember. <laughs> So what did you just one day, you're just like, I'm going to go get a tomato plant. Yeah. I was like, I think we were probably this, cause this is what always happens at home Depot for something else. And uh -huh. then I see a plant and I'm like, well, might as well get that too. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get a single tomato off of it because it kept, well, one, it didn't grow that much because the sun and then it kept tipping over because the pot was so small, yes. but if the wind blew, it just tipped right over. So it wasn't successful, but it was the start. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you didn't give up after that. Oh my gosh, me too. I can't even believe like looking at it now and only, yeah, about four years later and looking back then it's incredible to me how much you can learn gardening in such a short amount of time and still have no idea a lot of the time what you're doing. But like, I just learned, I feel like every week I'm learning more and more stuff. Oh, absolutely. That's the thing with gardening. Like you are constantly yeah. learning all the time, like over, yes. and, over. <laughs> <laughs> and there's things that I thought like worked really well in certain instances and then don't really work well in other instances. So like things that I thought were the way I should do it. And then that changes based on the change in either like the environment. Cause we moved here two, two and a half years ago now. Mm -hmm. So like going from different growing areas, I'm seeing how different things are working. So it's been yeah. very fun though, but very interesting. Yeah. That's definitely always a learning curve going somewhere new. <laughs> yes. How long have you been in your place right now? Well, so we moved I technically we were still in Oklahoma city, but we moved here to land in, um, 2020. And then okay, yeah. for that, we were growing in our backyard. Now we have a bunch of land. We have five acres now. Um, oh. but yeah, we, had, <laughs> we were living in a neighborhood before and even just like, we're probably like 25 minutes away from where we were. And even then, like, it's still like way different. So I can't imagine going from like city to city. And, yeah. 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 It's, it's crazy. The last balcony you were on it was so here like whatever direction you face really does have an impact because typically there's buildings everywhere else so yeah. now we face west um which means it's not in the sun all day but the last place was south and I burned so many plants mm -hmm. because I thought the more sun the better and then I realized that's not true for all plants and that's when I realized yes. you can grow plants in the shade <laughs> yeah Yep. Shade can be your friend. That's for sure. Yes. Especially, I don't know if there's any science behind this, um, but it seems like because we're three stories up, I don't know if the sun's more intense or there's just fewer things that can block it, but it seems like it gets so much hotter up here. It than makes if I sense. On the ground. Yeah. It makes sense Closer to me. to the sun, right? Yeah, exactly. I haven't found anything that explains why it makes sense, but it makes sense to me when I think about it, but it's <laughs> like, I can come up here and be sweating and then I'll like go out onto the street to walk around and I'll need a sweatshirt. So it's just like completely different climate sometimes. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so through this time of gardening, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned your best advice to give to somebody? Oh, I would say the best advice is to never feel bad about killing a plant. 
because I used to feel really bad if I killed the plant. And then I realized, oh, that's just part of it. Like even people that have been doing this for, I don't know, their whole lives almost will kill oh, plants. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and kind of along that line too, like being afraid to try something because you don't know what you're doing. Because I most of the time do things that I have no idea if they're going to work. And then I try it. And most of the time I will say, I'm pleasantly surprised that it works. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's sometimes that it doesn't because that was um, a little bit nerve wracking too, especially getting on Instagram and seeing how many people know so much. And I felt like I knew nothing. So I was almost afraid to like put stuff out there because I had no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> re you realize that like everyone is learning all the time. So Absolutely. yeah, don't be sad if you kill anything that's normal and don't be afraid to try something. If you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, Nature is very forgiving. Trying. Oh yeah. 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 There's been plants that I've killed multiple times and then eventually I get them to work. Like my dahlias now, I think I've killed them the first two years. And then last year I just changed things up and now they've done great. So something awesome. that you might think you're terrible at, then you get good at it. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And just don't be too hard on yourself. Cause I think it's easy to, especially when you're starting off and you feel like you're doing so many things wrong to like get a bit down, you feel sad, but then yeah. it's just, it really is amazing what you'll learn very, very quickly. <laughs> so at what point did you start your Instagram? Was it Instagram that you did first where you started the Chicago? Yeah. Partner? As soon as we had a space where I realized we could have a garden, I started an Instagram and you know, you scroll back. So I guess it was 2000. Yeah. 2019. Um, so I scroll back and it, it was just like pictures of like a patch of grass. <laughs> like it wasn't anything exciting. And I probably posted more about house plants at first, um, but I'm really uncreative with coming up with names. So that's why it's just Chicago Gardener. Because uh -huh. I was like, well, at some point I'll think of a name specific to me and not just, you know, where I'm from and Gardener, but that's kind of now stuck. I was also shocked it hadn't been used yet because I feel yeah. like every time I try to create a handle that's already been taken by somebody. So that's what it's been for now. Uh, but yeah, most, I look back in 2019 and it's just like a very blurry photo of a plant <laughs> really close up. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the community has been great. It, it, the gardening community on Instagram, I guess really in most places too, like everyone I feel like is friendly. Everyone's really helpful. I can ask a question and get a bunch of responses. So I don't, mm -hmm. I'd say I'd probably learned as much just from Instagram as I have like looking up and Googling stuff online when I had a question and I get so many yeah. ideas too. Oh, I agree. Gar I feel like the gardeners on all social media, they're all just so positive and nice yeah. and encouraging and yeah. I love it. It's amazing. It's like, I don't know if gardening makes you a happier person or happier people are drawn to gardening. I definitely <laughs> think that it makes you happier. I, yeah. I would definitely go with that. Like everyone's just so nice and so willing to help. I, I don't know. I really, really like it because the internet, a lot of places cannot be that great. So I the know, fact that yeah. there's just so many nice people out there, it's really nice. <laughs> That's awesome. The little happy place online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So at what point did uh, your Instagram start to take off? Um, I think it's been kind of a slower growth, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, there's been, I did feel bad because there was one reel, I think with the Pothos wall that kind of took off and I got a lot of followers from that and then started posting gardening stuff for six months straight. So I felt like, oh, if you saw a houseplant reel, but then I haven't really done anything with house plants until it starts to get cold again. So yeah, that real, but I, I think it, it wasn't like a million people saw it, but that was one of the ones that kind of took off a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's just been really steady, which has been nice. I feel like too, Yeah, that's great. Because it, it feels like a more of a community than like something going viral and then a bunch of people that don't really know yes. you and what they might expect from you. And, um, there's actually been a lot of people from Chicago too, with, who are also urban gardening, which I was excited to find out through Instagram that there were so many people that were doing the same thing that I was, because if you're walking down the street, you can't really see what's going on on top of people's yeah. houses. So that's been really cool to be able to connect to with so many people from Chicago. Cause I wasn't sure how many people there would be gardening in the city. There's a lot. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. I think your advice that you give to new gardeners is so needed. Yeah. A lot of people are in your situation where they don't have a lot of space, but they want to get growing. Yeah. I and mean, even if you have two, 
two pots, just put two pots out and grow something and it'll be amazing. Um, but it's something I have to remember because sometimes I feel like I can't post something really beginner, if that makes sense, because I'm like, well, everyone probably knows this already. So why would I post it? And then I post it and I realize there's a lot of people that are just getting started. So it is really helpful. So I have to keep reminding myself that, yeah, not everyone is all on the same page. There's a lot of people that are just starting off, you know, every single day. So that's who I'm hoping that I'm reaching out and helping to. And then I like to learn from the people that have been doing this and are doing really cool things. I've been for like 10, 15 years and learning stuff from them. So I feel like you can learn kind of at any stage too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say would be a really good plant to start with for somebody that's in your situation where maybe they just have a pot or two and they're looking to grow something? Yeah. So I would always like to say, start with a tomato, but it requires more space. Um, So I really like growing bell peppers. I think the containers for those, I usually have like a five gallon grow bag, which is maybe like 10 inches in diameter. So it doesn't take up a ton of space and it's really productive throughout the year. Yeah. Any herbs are super easy to grow, especially in containers. I have mine in small terracotta pots and they do really well. Um, I like zinnias too. For some reason, that's a plant that again, I can ignore and they stay alive. And every time I cut a flower, it gives me two new ones. So I really like that. And I think something that will last throughout the season, especially when you're starting off gardening is really good because you're not really having to think about replacing it through the year or through the season, you know, transitioning from like cool to warm to cool, just get something out there that'll kind of do well for the majority of the season. Um, And I really like that. So something that's super productive, doesn't take up a bunch of space and will last for a while. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Having something that will be successful for them so they can feel the success. Yes. 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 Even if the success means like don't do a lot, (laughs) you'll still feel good that it's still out there and alive. And something that I don't think I really knew until I got into gardening was there were so many flowers that you were supposed to pick them because more would grow because I would always feel bad picking a flower thinking that that just means there's going to be fewer flowers and then you could bring it inside too. So that's really nice. But stuff like that, that I just never thought of has been really cool to learn. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. So how do you uh, start your plants? Do you start them indoors or, or do you buy plants? What what do you do? I began with starts. I think the first year I pretty much bought everything from either the local garden centers here or Home Depot. Home Depot is closest to us. Um, And then I found out you can buy seeds online. (laughs) And that just became, it's, I feel like it's very, addicting to just get into finding all the different seeds you can um, because I love zinnias and all the ones from the store I just feel like never did quite as well and they weren't as unique and fun and then I saw all these varieties online and I bought so many different seeds and I had some that grow like five feet tall two feet tall three feet tall um, in a bunch of different colors that I never would have found so I've kind of become addicted now to buying a bunch of seeds and I start them usually in two batches, one probably around mid March and then the other one around mid April because our last frost date is typically around Mother's Day. Um, And it's always hard to not start the seeds in February because I'm just sitting there with my packs of seeds and there's (laughs) nothing to do and I wanna start growing them. Um, But yeah, usually I wait until mid March and then I'll start my first batch and then get the second one going about a month later and then move them outside mid to end of May, if I'm patient enough, um, anything that's cool weather, I'll pretty much start from seed outside because I don't have a ton of space inside. So like carrots, beets, radishes, all of those I direct. So, but I will say something I've found is when I'm starting something inside from seed, it does, it, it gets a head start when I move it outside, but eventually the stuff I direct. So does catch up. Um, so maybe gives me a little bit of a head start, but it's not like a huge difference. So if somebody didn't have room to start inside, like direct sowing everything, I think would still give me, you know, a good, good harvest throughout the season of the plants that I'm growing. So is this your job or do you do something else during the day or? What, what I wish this was my job. <laughs> I know. Uh, I've been doing digital marketing for 
last 12 years, I think now. Um, so that was just kind of the job, like the career that I got into. It's been really nice, especially the last five to six years, because I transitioned into working from home full time. So I had experience before 2020 of working from home, which was nice uh, when yeah. everyone then was transitioning to working from home. And that gives me a lot of time too to like, I can take a break, go out to the garden, do whatever I need to do, come back in. So it's not like I'm sitting somewhere specifically for eight hours a day. So having that flexibility has been really, really nice, even though I would love to just do it full time. Something I've been kind of thinking about is maybe taking like some horticulture classes or something like that, just to get more education than just Googling on it. <laughs> and maybe someday it would be nice to transition um, kind of like on a bucket list thing that I don't know if it would ever happen, but the Chicago Botanic Gardens are just like about a 20 to 30 minute drive away from where we are. And most of that is because there's traffic <laughs> in the city. So it's not that far, but they have classes. Um, and then there's actually a person I follow on Instagram who was kind of in the business world in Chicago. And then now he's like one of the head garden designers there just from like taking the classes that they offer and working there. So I feel like nice. eventually that would be really cool to do yeah. because there's so many jobs that I never really thought about that were possible of actually working in like horticulture or gardening. Um, there's actually another company that's called the roof crop that they have. I don't know how many they have maybe like 10 or so gardens on tops of buildings that they harvest and there's people that do that full time. So wow. now I've been kind of exposed to the possibilities and I think that so would be really, yeah, that would be really cool. And I never knew that existed. Um, I actually just got some honey because they do hives. I don't know if it's in the same places as the gardens, but they have like 40 different beehives around the city. So there's a lot of opportunity that I don't think I would have thought about living in Chicago that I was exposed to just from Instagram. So yeah, I think long-term it would be really cool because I love it so much. And as much as digital marketing can be interesting, I don't love it in the same way that I love gardening. So if you can, you know, turn this, the thing that you love into the thing that you're doing for a living, I think that's always really cool. Absolutely. But then there's the okay. risk of would I, would it take away some of the joy? I don't know. I feel like I have a good balance right now, but we'll see kind of where the future goes. <laughs> Yeah. I love, I love what you said too, about having, or about being able to get out into the garden during your work day. Yes. That's so important too, to not have to just, just sit there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially sitting in a computer all day, just itself is a little bit hard, but even if I'm feeling like stressed at work, I can take a break and not just take a break, like in an office and sit somewhere else for a little bit, but take a break, go outside of the garden, which is definitely very different. So it's a very, I'm very lucky to have the setup that I do and the garden's literally right. So I'm in my office and the garden's literally out those doors right there. I definitely set it up that way on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to hear. I don't have to go far. No, not at all. I do track in a lot of dirt. There's actually dirt on the floor right now, <laughs> but other than that, it's great. <laughs> is this your full time with the app? And It is. Yeah. yeah. Now it is. Um, before this, I was doing nursing and- oh. Oh, wow. nursing. And then we were lucky enough to be able to go full time on this with Park Seed yeah. uh, this year, actually. So it's super exciting. That's really cool. So can I tell you how I started using your app? Yeah. <laughs> so the, first year, the first year I was gardening, um, it was recommended on Instagram. I don't, I guess stories are around then, but I think somebody like posted about it and I downloaded it. And I think that's the first time I realized there were cool weather crops because I was sorting through everything. And I was seeing like, when you start them, and I was like, wait, I can start things earlier <laughs> than the end of May. And so now I use it all the time. So I use it to plan out what I'm planting, where I'm planting it. And I was really excited when I saw that, I think I was on the Park Seed website and I saw the name or it was in a banner or something that they said they were now working with you guys. And I was like, wait, I use that app all of the time time <laughs> that's and, so great even, I don't know how much has changed in your mind since 2019 but I feel like every time I open the app there's like a cool new thing that I never oh yes before. yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's super fun like we're having a lot of fun with it but yeah there's constantly new things coming up new design new new feature new this new that it's it's awesome yeah. It's so cool. And I have no, like my brain doesn't work that way to create an app. So I'm always very impressed when people do technological stuff like that. So <laughs> it's, been, it's been very, very, very useful. It's 
other than Google, when I take a picture of something to see what kind of bug it is, that's the only other gardening app I use. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. <laughs> so good yeah. job on creating a great app. <laughs> I give Dale the credit. <laughs> I helped out with a little bit of it, but yeah. did he do tech stuff, I guess, before? No yeah, he, okay. he has been in the tech world, like pretty much his whole career. Um, but he didn't learn how to code until he started making this app oh, and, wow. yeah, and pretty much like taught himself to code. And then he got some help from some friends who are now working with us too, full time. Oh, that's really cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, I know it's, it's so amazing. And it just kind of blew up from there. <laughs> yeah. I'm always amazed by anybody that can code or anything like that. Cause it's just, I've tried to look at stuff and it's just not, my brain is not interested. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a completely different language. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had to teach me a little bit because in order for me to go in, because I was manually inserting all of the information for all the plants. So like looking oh. up like seed depth, like, I mean, ev everything. And all of that was like written in code behind the scenes uh. like, here for me now, but this is how it was in the beginning. So he had to teach me how to code in the database. So it, it was a learning curve a bit, but yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's fun. <laughs> well, it's really easy to use. So on my end, it's a very simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really good. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm constantly using it too. Yeah. I, cause I would never, I'm very bad at like labeling things in my garden or I'll tell myself I'll remember when I did this and then I don't. So I've realized I need a place to record it. So that's where I record everything. Yes. Yeah. We're excited though. So a bunch of new features are coming out related to that. My garden section. Oh, so okay. The, yeah, uh, look out for that. <laughs> yeah. The new update should be coming out soon. I'll get you a sneak peek. Oh, that'll be so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to try it out and let us know what you think. Oh, it definitely will. <laughs> Some things that I've realized are actually beneficial about container gardening. So I used to okay. think that I was limited because I didn't have a yard. So it wasn't going to be like as easy or as fun, even that I was going to be missing out on something when I was gardening in containers. Um, but I really, I mean, other than just space, and the ease of sticking something in the ground instead of having to find a pot and then get soil and all of that. I really don't feel like I'm missing on any part of the experience, just having a bunch of containers. And there's a lot of things I see other people complaining about that I don't have to worry about, like weeds. I mean, we have, we do have a maple tree and some seeds get in there, but if it gets in there, it's in a pot and there's maybe two and I pull those out and it's really easy. Anything that can't fly, doesn't get up here since we're on the rooftop. So when I see people talking about like deer eating their flowers or yeah. rabbits, I'm like, I don't, I don't have to deal with that. We actually get birds up here, but they've never like taken blueberries or anything. So oh, that's I don't great. know if it's because it's so close to the windows and they can see me if I'm moving, but huh. we haven't really had any sort of pest issues like that. I do get some like aphids and other things like that, but like the big animals that I feel like people complain about. I have never really had those issues. So I really found a lot of fun in container gardening. I can move things around really easily if I need to. Yes. I love that about container gardening. Yeah. Yeah. And if, so when I had my tomatoes um, at our last place, I realized they weren't in the right spot. And instead of like losing that crop, I just dragged <laughs> the bag yeah. over to where the right spot is, or if something is growing like one direction, I can just twist the pot around and then it looks more Absolutely. full. Yeah. Or if a dahlia, the bloom is facing the back, I just turn <laughs> the pot around so that I can <laughs> enjoy it and just keep rotating it throughout the season. So container gardening itself. Yeah. Even though I went into it thinking I'm going to be missing out on the gardening experience, I really, really haven't. And it's been really fun. I almost wonder if I could go back to like having a yard and gardening in the ground, because I feel there's so many things I kind of take for granted <laughs> that I wouldn't that I don't have to worry about now that I would have to worry about then. <laughs> Do you feel like you have to water a whole bunch more? Some stuff, but so we usually get so much rain in the spring and fall that I barely have to manually water, which is really nice. Although this spring we got too much rainfall and it did kill some of my plants um, that were in smaller containers because they got too waterlogged. So that was a learning experience that too much water can be bad. Um, during the summer, I do have a drip system set up now. So that was the best thing I did last year. 
even though the garden's not huge, it would still take, if I was using a hose, probably like 30 to 45 minutes to water everything each morning, which if I can save myself that time to do other stuff, that's great. So it's not like it would take a long time, but that's just something I don't have to worry about. And when we're out of town. Um, so I have a drip system now set up to most of the stuff in my garden. And there's just a handful of pots that I go out and hand water. And there's definitely some that I know I need to water every day. There was one pot I need to water twice a day because it was too small of a pot for what I planted in it. So <laughs> it dried up very quickly, but I, I don't feel like I have to really water more often than other people that I know of kind of in the same climate if they are planting in the ground. So even though I think my containers do dry out faster during the summer, there's just so many periods where we don't have much rain at all that I think most people are probably watering once a day, whether it's in their yard or in their container garden. And I did overwater it first and kill it <laughs> up too. So that was another thing I learned. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a common thing. I feel like, especially with beginners, because they love it so much yeah. and they want it to do well. So they give it lots and lots of water. Yeah. And I never thought to touch the soil to see if it was still wet. <laughs> yeah. I learned that. I was like, oh, okay. No, this is still wet. I don't need to water it. Yeah. I, I feel like I make that video a lot, but people are <laughs> always asking me. I'm like, take your finger, put yes, it in the soil. Take it in. That's the best thing you wet. can do. No water. <laughs> yep. I do that for my house plants now too. I can get in the winter. I can get maybe even two to three weeks between watering my house plants because the water is not drying up that quickly. Um, summer it's like once a week, but maybe I can still get like 10 days sometimes, but yeah, I always check because if not, I'm going to overwater and kill a plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I would still do that. I mean, I'm, I love these things, but I have to be like, Okay. <laughs> Hands off. Oh, yeah. There. I love those though. I don't have anything like that at my house, but I feel like I need some. Oh, I know. I love having a green background here. It's yeah. I don't have a lot of tall plants. Yeah. That's what I'm missing. I need more height in the plants. Cause I have mostly trailing plants, which are fun, but then it's just and like, you have it all up on your wall. So it's kind yep. of, like you have a big, yep. plant, so. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. My problem is I'll go to the store and then it's like, well, can I actually fit this in the car to take it home? No. <laughs> so I have to leave it there and get something smaller. That'll hopefully eventually get that large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if people wanted to follow you, how do they find you on social media? So they can find me at Chicago Gardener on both Instagram and YouTube. I have a TikTok. I sometimes use it. <laughs> it's one of those things where I open it and just feel like I don't understand it. So then I close it, <laughs> but Instagram and YouTube is where I am the most active for sure. Okay. And what, what do you usually do? You talk about container gardening? In the yes. World? Yeah. Usually. Yeah. A little bit of everything. My videos on YouTube are mostly either uh, like the tasks that I'm doing or like how to X, Y, Z in a container garden. Um, and then Instagram, it's just, here's what's happening today. <laughs> Yeah. Things, things are dying. I don't know why things are looking really good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. Well, I need to make sure that I check out your YouTube channel. I don't think I've, uh, I've been following you on Instagram, but I don't think I, uh, I've been on your YouTube yet. Yeah. It's what I just posted a vlog a few weeks ago, maybe last week from the grand garden show. Awesome. So that was a really cool experience this year. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I'll definitely go check it out after this. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So is there any last words of wisdom that you want to share with everybody? I just think that everybody should be growing something, whether it's a plant outside, a plant inside. I never expected it to bring me so much joy. And that's not even an understatement of just how happy growing things makes me in the day-to-day -day life. So just grow something, even if it's small. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So what, uh, it just, just the beautifulness, the green, pretty colors. Is that yeah, what it does? It def play? Definitely looking at it. <laughs> so looking out in my garden, but just the work, um, seeing something that starts as a very tiny seed and yeah. putting in the work and then seeing what comes from that. It, it just kind of gives me a little bit of purpose. I feel like, and sometimes when like the world can feel very hectic, um, I can slow down a little bit when I'm focusing on my plants. And I really like that. And I think that's something that kind of in the day to day, you could forget that take a little bit of a breather and slow down a bit. 
You did that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, oh, I grew a hundred tomatoes <laughs> this yeah. year. What an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And Ellie, she's down here yes. sleeping now. It was so. great to, oh, of course now, but no, it was great to meet her yep. too and to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. And hopefully uh, some people will go in and check you out because I know it's been, uh, I love following your Instagram. So oh, thank you. Check, check that out too. Get inspired yeah. to grow some more food and some pretty plants. Yes. And it's so, <laughs> it's much easier than you think it is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much too. This has been really fun.